This is the Brisbane, a legendary tier premium Commonwealth cruiser. It is the main reward from the United Strength campaign, and the ship is basically a minotaur, a radar minotaur, with high explosive shells. So with that, let's get into the setup of the ship and the commander, who is Harold B. Farncom. Base trait is careful, and the first two uh, parts here of his base trait is a smoke detectability and range while firing in the smoke, and the uh, Brisbane doesn't have any smoke, so we're going to ignore that and go with the main battery reload time. So we're getting that benefit out of the base trait. And then for the first inspiration, we have a Fournette, incendiary which improves the damage from the high explosive shells for any ship type as it turns out and then here we went with yamamoto for the second inspiration and this improves the cruiser's armor piercing shell penetration multiplier so our inspirations are helping out either he or armor piercing depending on which way we go so with the skills rather than burn it down xxl i went with beyond range to get more range here and Second skill is Igniter, so I'm improving the chances of the cruiser's HE shells causing a fire. Then here I went with Punch Through, and that improves the armor piercing shell damage and penetration multiplier. So I'm trying to enhance the HE and the armor piercing penetration as I, uh, as I can here with the skills. And Fixated is the last one. It improves the cruiser's main battery shell grouping and dispersion. Then here for legendary skill, I want with refill station, which improves the cruiser main battery reload time. And the special effect is uh, cruiser main battery range is improved by 10%, and that is active when you're within two kilometers of an allied ship, and that is at legendary two. Going up to legendary four will improve that radius up to three and a half kilometers. All right, let's check out the upgrades. First upgrade is Aiming Systems Mod 1, which improves the main battery dispersion and the torpedo launcher traverse speed. And secondaries have a little bit of an improvement there. And then we went with Steering Gears Mod 2, which improves the rudder shift time by 20%. And here we went with Concealment System Mod 1, which improves the detectability of the ship and the incoming fire dispersion. This will double up on your fully upgraded camo in the fire dispersion part. It uh, adds another 5% to that. And then for the last upgrade slot, we went with Gunfire Control System Mod 2, which improves the main battery dispersion and its range. We did not go with any uh, epic mods there. Loadout is high explosive shells, iron piercing shells, and torpedoes, which we'll get into in a little bit. Consumables, Damage Control Party, runs for five seconds, and it reloads every 57 seconds, and there is an unlimited number of those consumables. Then we went with the Repair Party, which will partially restore the ship's HP by repairing any light damage at the rate of 865 hit points per second. It runs for 20 seconds, and it reloads every 76 seconds, and there are two of those consumables. Then we selected Sonar over the AA Defensive Fire because the ship's already got a great AA suite. So we went with sonar here and the torpedo detectability range is 3.4 kilometers. Ships is 4.9 kilometers. Duration is 100 seconds. Reloads every 171 seconds and there are also two of those consumables. Then the ship does have the radar consumable as we said at the top, which uh, has a detection range of 10 kilometers, which is pretty good. It runs for 22 seconds reloads every 114 seconds, and there are two of those consumables. Uh, we're not running any boosters here, but we did go with the Epic Battle Booster to get more range out of the main guns. Ship comes with a cool Brisbane flag. You're gonna wanna go ahead and install that once you unlock the ship. And as far as the camouflage goes, I do have the historical camouflage that was sitting there. Sea detectability range and incoming fire dispersion is four and a half percent respectively. It's going to cost some buckets of paint to do that. And then the spec survivability hit points is 43,300. Armor is 6 to 127 millimeter. And we have no torpedo damage reduction here. Artillery, you have 10 guns. Reach out to 18.4 kilometers. 
with a 4.7 second reload and traverse time. Both of those times are spectacular. HE shells have a maximum of 2253 with a 12% chance of setting fire, and that is every 4.7 seconds, so that's pretty good. Armor piercing has a maximum of 3456, and I don't think these armor piercing shells are as potent as the Minotaur, so you do want to look out for that if you already have the Minotaur. Uh, the armor piercing will not be as potent as the Minotaurs. Torpedoes, you have four launchers of five torpedoes each. That is 20 torpedoes on the ship, 10 per side. Reload every 131 seconds. Maximum damage is 16,767. Range is a pretty good 13 and a half kilometers with a 65 knot speed. AA defenses, you will definitely clear the sky into Brisbane if you get in a match with an aircraft carrier that wants to try that out. Maneuverability, maximum speed is 34 and a half knots. Turning circle radius is three quarters of a kilometer. Rudder shift time is 8.3 seconds. Concealment, detectability range by sea is 11 kilometers. Detectability range by air is 6.9 kilometers. And if you're firing in a smoke, it's 5.7 kilometers. Armor, yeah, uh, pretty much just like a destroyer. Whatever you do, do not get hit, even though we do have the yellow armor here. Uh, that does not really come in play like you would think it would. Um, basically, uh, whatever you do, do not get hit. Overview, it has an above average number of available torpedo tubes. And yeah, 20 torpedoes, 10 per side is quite a number of torpedoes. So you want to try to use those uh, as often as you can. Hidden, good concealment means the ship can get closer to enemies before being detected. And that is awesome. And greater heal, repair party restores severe damage. All right. So here you go for the Brisbane. Check this out. After World War II, the Royal Australian Navy may have acquired one or more design C cruisers to replace and reinforce their Navy. These cruisers from the planned 1947 Minotaur class light -like cruisers are designed with automatic six inch 152 millimeter guns that can engage both surface and air targets. And yeah, automatic fire is probably part of why the shells reload so quickly. Your design was 1947 and there were no ships in the series. And that is interesting that it says the Royal Australian Navy may have acquired those ships. So, all right. So there you go. That is it for the setup of the ship and the commander. Let's go out in a standard match and see what the Brisbane can do. All right. Well, the map is hotspot and looks like a uh, three destroyers per side and three cruisers and three battleships. So it's a pretty even spread of ship types here in this match and yeah start out in the open water and the number one thing you want to do at least for me is i go and look for cover with the uh, the brisbane because when you don't do that and you stay out in the open water you do get wiped out relatively quickly i um, actually checked that out <laughs> in the first few matches that i had and at the end of the video here, after the closing credits, you'll see a little clip of um, my experiences with uh, the Brisbane uh, just starting out where the minute you go out from behind cover, you get dev struck. Uh, at least I did there and I thought it was a good enough video to kind of show the downside of the Brisbane. But if you don't do that and you don't go out in the open water i and by the way i'm not even sure that an agile build would really help you out because the ship is pretty big um, i had so so results with an agile build with the minotaur i probably should set up the brisbane to try out the um, agile build but i suspect that that would not really help you out much and you'll still get obliterated so here i am more or less behind cover here uh, that island is pretty tall, so I'm going to have a limited um, limited amount of uh, angle there that I'm going to be able to uh, get over uh, that island. Okay, so I took a shot at the Neptune there before he was um, 
enveloped in the smoke, but uh, we did start a fire real quick on that uh, the battleship that we were first targeting. And there, there's some blind fires right there, and we got another fire. So I'm keeping the uh, level, the up and down, um, more or less where it was when I got that hit, and I'm just trying to adjust where I think the... Uh, the Neptune is within the smoke there, so I can kind of gauge where he is from seeing where the shells uh, come out in the smoke there. And that Conqueror, I think that's the guy that we were uh, targeting earlier, he is gone already. So um, we are ahead a little bit in the match at this point. All right, so there's an Ohio. That, that Ohio will definitely take us out in a single salvo, I believe. So you want to watch out for uh, big time battleships like that. But uh, we do have some great shots on him because uh, we can, uh, no island indicator. He's behind the island, he can't even see us. So this is just awesome. We are teeing off on the guy. And you can see the ship does kind of turn around pretty good even without an agile build. So uh, there is that, another fire got started. So. We are up to three fires already uh, within just a few minutes in the match, and he gets taken out. Um, yeah, the Ohio got taken out big time right there. Um, I didn't really see whether he got uh, torpedoed or dev struck from somebody's salvo, but um, for sure that Ohio uh, did not want to do that. All right, there's a Des Moines over there behind the island, another Conqueror. And yeah, he is not pointing at us, so we can take some um, some shots at him without uh, running for cover here. And it looks like the Neptune is not aiming at us either. So there again, we are uh, targeting those two ships while we are out in the open because they're not targeting us. So uh, you can see that the guns traverse really quickly, and that's the thing about the Minotaur is... Um, guns traversed in just like five six seven seconds same thing here with the brisbane yeah that is awesome if you can get an agile build working the uh the guns would traverse so quick that that would really help out as far as the agile build uh as well but yeah as long as these guys are occupied uh, we are just going to uh, tee off and there is another fire so we're up to four fires already he is out of range, but I'm still taking some shots because you never know. He may eventually close in. And we are going to spend quite a bit of time right here just pummeling the Conqueror with our high explosive shells. And you can see in this match, I'm not really uh, going between high explosive and armor piercing at this point because... On long-range battleships, I definitely think that the HE shells are more effective than armor piercing would be on on the Conqueror for sure. Fire. All right, there somebody is starting to target us. It kind of looks like the Conqueror may have his guns in our. Looks like they're aimed a little to our left, so they're not really targeting us at this point, but somebody is, and it's probably the um, cruiser to the left of us, along with that uh, destroyer right there, those guys, uh, 19 kilometers away. That is kind of far for anybody in the game, but maybe they are uh, the ones who are targeting us, but even still, I'm going to go behind cover here. And... Yeah, this is perfect. You can see that the island indicator, um, the crash indicator for the island is up, but uh, we backed up and we don't have any fear of uh, hitting the island at this point. And there are um, seven fires we've started now. So, uh, yeah, we are uh, dealing with the conqueror with a death by a thousand cuts. So, uh, yeah, very accurate shells right here. So look at that. As long as a couple of shells hit each salvo, that's really all you can expect at this point, especially when he's nose on like this. 
And at this point, I was expecting to uh, to get that destroyed ship. It doesn't matter because, uh, yeah, we are ahead in the match. There's uh, that Des Moines that we are looking at earlier. And he is uh, kind of broadside here, so I'm considering whether I want to go with armor piercing. This takes a few seconds to uh, reload, so no problem switching there. The Des Moines did fire up his radar, and he is gone right as soon as we take our first salvo with the armor piercing. So we did switch to armor piercing. Once he is gone, we went back to high explosive. Even though there are cruisers and um, destroyers left. So three destroyers and two cruisers are left on the red team. Three destroyers and one cruiser is left on the red team. So we're going to come over here in B and defend B. And we're going to see if we could find whatever ship is in there as well. There's, we're detected already. So there is a Z-44. He is so close that he is just in big trouble. He's not really moving. Looks like he started a smoke screen. But we have started our radar. So uh, this guy is really out of luck right here. So just a couple more salvos. We should uh, take him out. And there you go. That is your radar kill of a destroyer within the base and um, yeah okay that's what you want to do when you have a radar cruiser or a radar boat in general is to be able to take out destroyers like that when they get too close in the base it's happened to me many times so it's uh, I'm glad to see that I was able to um, pay that back once so all right, so now we are going to go to A and look to capture the base and get more XP. We're up to 82,000 damage on nine fires, destroyed ship, three defendants, and 169 main gun hits at this point. And we've stayed relatively hidden throughout the entire match. All right, so I guess we could talk as long as we got some time while we go to A. We can talk a little bit about the commander situation here with Farnkov. As you saw, his base trait was a smoke trait, and the Brisbane does not have any smoke. So in some ways, I am looking for a commander, um, a, I'm looking at the teams there, a Commonwealth commander to take advantage of the qualities of the uh, Brisbane. One thing I definitely do not want to do, so I, I had uh, Farn Cobb set up for the Perth, and I'm happy with Farn Cobb on the Perth. I do not want to reset this commander or any commander up, depending on whether I'm toggling between two ships uh, in the line or not. So uh, if I have Farn Cobb set up for the Perth, I don't want to reconfigure the guy to set him up for the Brisbane, so that's why I basically went with this, the same build I had of Farm Cobb uh, that I used for the Perth, and I was pretty effective. I got a pretty good game in the Perth, and um, yeah, so I'm kind of hoping that another commander does uh, get released for the Commonwealth, but then, you know, that being said, uh, as you're gonna see here, by the time that uh, the battle's done and you look at the final scores and the XP, what do you need a commander for? Because uh, everything turned out just fine, as you're going to see. So uh, you do see a lot of people comment about, um, you know, you need a specific commander for this, that, and the other type of ship. And then uh, you check out the final results and uh, the, the game was fine with the inappropriate commander with that ship, if you know what I mean. So, yes, I guess it would be nice to have a commander that suited the specific qualities of the Brisbane, but it really wasn't necessary, as you're going to see toward the end, because we do get a pretty good score. All right, there is just one cruiser left, and once we capture A here, we are going to charge over to... I believe the uh, the cruiser is in C where all those torpedoes are going. So that is a direction that we are going to head. Yep, 
Yeah, so Napoli, he is uh, half health, so uh, he's doing okay. And you can see that we can get a shot on him. The island indicator did not come up, so we can get a shot on him. And he's disappeared already. Took another shot anyway. Uh, last known uh, targeting location is what I was relying on. So, okay. So we start yet a tenth fire, and we get two more defended. So that is really going to help out our XP at the end. And that was uh, sort of a blind shot, kind of. And uh, the fire damage is ticking up on that guy. So you can see our damage is going up close to 90,000 damage right now. All right, well, that was a big time victory in the Brisbane. 290,000 silver credits. Almost 90,000 total damage battle performance on 171 main gun hits. We did detect a ship. We got a destroyed ship, 10 fires, and 5 defendants, and a capture. So uh, that's 6 uh, similar types of flags, I'm going to say, on those last two items. And I'm going to think that we did pretty well here. So let's check out the team result. Whoa, first place overall with 2,600, almost 2,700 XP. Pretty good score. It's my best score to date on the Brisbane. It seems to be... Either this or you get dev struck and sent back to port. So uh, be patient and the ship will reward you. And 67,000 credits by the time it was all said and done on the economy tab. All right, well, that's it for the Brisbane. I, I guess it is kind of a, a high skill ship where uh, if you play patiently, the ship can reward you. But if you go out in the open water, Look out because uh, what you're going to see at the end of the video may happen to you. In any event, hope you got to see a little bit about the ship. Let me know what you think down below. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you like it. Enemy team has taken the lead.